This is a common subject brought up in the comments of my videos constantly, especially when I talk about range of new electric pickup trucks because EVs are kind of this like miracle of efficiency, right? Like the reason they're getting so popular is because energy density of batteries has increased and powertrains are getting more efficient and it's finally becoming feasible for us to actually like build vehicles that we can get inside in and treat like our normal cars, you know, with decent amount of storage space and still have great acceleration, great performance, and even do road trips with all with an electric powertrain. And a trailer and towing large capacities basically throws off this whole balancing act of efficiency when it comes to aerodynamics, the total weight of the vehicle, and how much energy it requires to move a certain amount of mass. And understandably, this subject comes up a lot when we talk about electric pickup trucks, because trucks, of course, tow a lot more regularly than everyday sedans or crossovers do. And there's clearly tons and tons of demand for electric pickup trucks and towing is a popular thing with trucks so that's why I think there's so much confusion and frustration with the lack of prioritization of towing capabilities when it comes to these electric pickups. It's not just Tesla and the Cybertruck, it's not just the F-150 Lightning and its range options, and it's not just Rivian, it's everybody. And I think I can explain directly to this demographic if you're watching this video and you care about towing with an EV as to why so many brands are not prioritizing this feature in capability and yes I am more specifically referring to cross-country towing or towing trailers on great distances with your truck just towing something across town you know you fill up a bunch of furniture in a trailer as you helping your friend move from one side of town to the other that's a different story that's pretty much what most Model Y's and Model X's are pretty capable of and I'm sure any electric truck is gonna be fine towing things on short distances and even with fairly heavy payloads you know, with the F-150 Lightning supporting 10,000 pounds, Cybertruck allegedly supporting up to 14,000 pounds, Rivian can tow quite a high capacity too, but the range problem of EVs becomes abundantly more clear once you start towing because, for one, a lot of the range benefits of EVs come from how aerodynamic they are, and trailers usually by design have to be pretty much not aerodynamic at all. You know, you can buy expensive Airstreams that try to be more aerodynamic, but still, it's quite a far cry cry from that ideal teardrop shape you want to be in order to actually have a low coefficient of drag and especially when people are towing trailers that don't have those kind of rounded edges and curved backs then it definitely makes for essentially the equivalent of hanging a parachute out the back of your truck and your coefficient of drag plays a big factor into how much energy it requires for you to move a lot of mass across a great distance so range takes a big hit when you're towing with an electric truck and adding a bunch of weight of course throws off the efficiency of the powertrain and it eats into your total range. Not to mention the charging network is also a bit of a hassle when both Electrify America stations and Tesla superchargers are really not set up for vehicles towing. Most of the time you either have to occupy a ton of stalls or you have to unhook the trailer, charge the vehicle, and then hook up the trailer again, which of course is quite annoying and frustrating. So let's talk solutions. I know I've been complaining about electric trucks and their towing limitations for a while now. What are ways we can combat this with the electric powertrain? There's pretty much only two things we can do to make electric trucks better at towing great distances and to try to make them on par with long distance towing of gas vehicles and that is bigger battery packs and changing the layout of charge stations and both of these solutions are not prioritized right now and honestly probably won't be for a while. So it seems pretty logical right? If you build something like a Rivian or an F-150 Lightning or even a Cybertruck. Some of you disagree with my predictions, that's fine, but for the sake of the example, let's say all of these electric trucks can do 300 miles of range. Maybe a little bit more than that, but that's the ballpark of their EPA estimate. Once you attach a trailer, as we've seen with the Rivian, you easily can lose 60, sometimes 70% of your total range, depending on how un-aerodynamic the trailer is or how high the payload capacity is. So you instantly take that down to close to 100 miles of range sometimes less, which means that you have to stop a lot more frequently and then the charge stations are not set up for trailers very well, so it's just overall a bad experience. It takes a lot longer and it's probably going to cost a lot more than just driving without a trailer. So we add more batteries to the vehicle, right? We make a max battery pack for the Rivian with over 400 miles of range or Tesla decides let's make a 500 mile range Cybertruck. That way when your range is cut in half or more, you can still go over 200 miles per charge, right? That's what most people 
are advocating for when they're talking about having larger battery options for electric trucks. The reason we're not seeing that happen, and the reason we're not even seeing Ford talk about doing a 400 mile range F-150 Lightning, is because it's going to slow down the production ramp and eat into the margins of the vehicle quite heavily. Batteries are the most expensive component of EVs right now, and the larger battery you put in your truck, the more weight it's going to have, which means more inefficiency for daily driving, which is typically around 30 or 40 miles a day. And it also means that you can't build as many trucks because we have a limited number of cells for all vehicles already. And if you start saying that, no, actually we need way more cells per vehicle, you're going to deliver less cars. Of course, you're going to have to raise the price a lot to secure your margins, which means more expensive trucks, which already I think most people feel like all these electric pickups are pretty pricey as is. Yeah, Ford has the affordable version of the Lightning, but they're losing money on that, so it's not super sustainable. And the bigger reality, which is a very hard pill for many truck owners to swallow, is there's a lot of people buying pickup trucks that are not doing cross-country towing. I'm not saying all. I understand that it's a use case. There's plenty of people that do tow with pickups, but there's still a fairly large demographic of people that don't do long-distance towing. And for the sake of practicality, the fact that we have limited sales and that these EV companies are trying to ramp up production as quickly as they can because that's how they can secure revenue, that's how they can turn profitable, which does matter in the long term. If you don't have a profitable company, you're not going to get short or long range version of pickup trucks because they'll be bankrupt. All these electric options kind of have to prioritize the market that doesn't care too much about towing right now because it's just not profitable or as scalable to prioritize the higher range versions. And the other side of the equation is also with these charge stations. Like, why are they not laid out the way gas stations are so that it would be easy for someone to pull in with a big trailer and charge up and pull out? Well, the reason they're not doing that is because it requires a lot more space and it's a very inefficient use of parking when it comes to charging an EV to kind of lay out six or four stations and have a lot of space in between them because then you can really only charge four to six EVs at a time within a fairly large parking area. The main reason you see Electrify America and Tesla superchargers typically just have stalls all lined up right next to each other is because then you can utilize a much smaller parking area and still charge 10, 15, maybe 20, 30 EVs all at the same time, which because statistically EVs take a little bit longer to charge than most gas fill-ups take, it makes more sense to maximize space for EVs instead of maximize trailers and larger vehicles because for the most part, the majority of EVs right now are all sedans and crossovers. They're not pickup trucks towing trailers. So it's going to be a while is what I'm saying before they can actually start building out charge stations and say, yeah, we don't really care if this one can only charge six or 10 at a time. We just want this charging station to be good for trailers because for one, that's going to bottleneck the number of EVs that can charge there. We're really not sure if there's any plans for Tesla or EA to build out charging stations that are like optimized for trailers or some stalls are optimized for normal vehicles where they also have pull through stations for people who are towing. Pretty much there's already a limitation on chargers and the more stalls and the more chargers you can deploy, the better for the overall growing demand of EVs with record deliveries happening all across the globe. More people are going electric than ever before. So you want to scale those chargers as efficiently as possible and taking up less parking lot space and utilizing as many charge stations as possible is the best way to combat that. Whereas trying to make inefficiently spaced chargers that are optimized for trailers, that's not going to be a great use of capital right now. So I'm not trying to say that EVs will never be good at cross-country towing. I'm just saying, yes, they're going to have limitations in the meantime, as in you're going to have to unhook the trailer and you're going to have to stop a lot because most electric trucks are not going to be over 400 miles of range anytime soon. And that's part of the reason why I don't believe Tesla is going to start with a 500 mile range Cybertruck for the same reason that Tesla announced, yeah, we're going to do a Plaid Model S and it's going to have over 520 miles of range. They quickly realized after announcing that, that, well, it would actually be much cheaper and more practical to reuse the old battery packs and just have a little over 300 miles of range because we need to prioritize production efficiency and ramping as much as possible. Are they denying that people would find use of 500 miles of range? I don't think so. I'm sure there's plenty of people that live in cold climates or want to go on great distances without stopping that could utilize a high range EV. It exists, but it's not the best for profitability and there's absolutely still demand for EVs that don't have range that high and because we have such finite materials and so little number of batteries for vehicles right now, it makes very, very little sense to start with the vehicles that consume 
consume the most amount of batteries and work your way down because that's going to be far less profitable. So that's why I'm predicting just like they compromised with the Plaid Model S and just like Rivian is finding tons of sales and has no problem delaying the max pack version because plenty of people are willing to buy a 300 or 200 mile range Rivian. And for the same reason that Ford is very comfortable just having a 200 and 300 mile range F-150 Lightning, even the Hummer, which is well over $100,000, still has over 65,000 reservations and does not go much further than 300 miles per charge. I don't think the Cybertruck is going to prioritize range that heavily because they need to focus on production ramping. And yes, that will come at the cost of its towing performance. It will not be great in the winter climates when that range gets cut in half. It won't be easy at superchargers with trailers. And I know they're going to lose people on that. I know there's some of you out there that are like, if I can't get that much range, then I'm not going through with my order. They know, okay? They understand that. They have way too many orders to fill, way too much demand to try to cater to every single demographic at the same time. These EV brands have to pick their battles carefully. And because of how long we have to go before EVs become all vehicles on the road, they're trying to accelerate production and get as many vehicles into customers' hands as possible. And doing lower range vehicles first is the best way to do that. It's the best way to secure their future. It's the best way to prioritize profitability. And I think that's part of the reason we're seeing a lot of skepticism and low deliveries with Lucid right now. They're prioritizing 500 mile range EVs and they're having a really difficult time ramping their production. And they have less cash on hand and there's a lot of people that are not sure that company's gonna have much of a future. So there's kind of your example of what happens when you prioritize high range above all else. I think Rivian honestly has a much greater shot of success partly because of their cash on hand but also because they're trying to prioritize their lower range vehicles first and ramp those up primarily because they'll be more profitable. I'd love to be wrong on this. It would be great if the first Cybertruck is a great bargain and has 500 miles of range. I'm just trying to keep expectations in check. I worry and get nervous when I see people that are hoping for a lot to happen and don't think practically or realistically about subjects and then they end up getting really, really disappointed when the everyday specifications actually come out and don't realize, why is the range so bad? You know, why is Tesla doing a standard range Model Y and why is the price so high? Like, this isn't what I wanted. It's because your expectations weren't realistic. That's why I do these videos. It's not because I enjoy being the bearer of bad news. It's not because I want Tesla to fail or I want the products to be bad. I just want you guys, the viewer, to understand why they make these decisions. There is logic behind it. There is reason. And with expectations in check, you'll be pleasantly surprised when reality comes to fruition. Thank you to everyone supporting this channel over on Patreon. Seriously helps out a ton. I really appreciate it. As well as just watching these videos, that makes a big difference as well. Take care. Have an excellent rest of your day.